guys, I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor here in Central Texas. Today, we are actually in San Antonio. I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite neighborhoods in SATX, San Antonio, Texas. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Almost Park. Get ready, we've got some fun info for you. Notice that there is a pretty obvious change of scenery. Uh, that is because I am staying in an Airbnb just north of downtown San Antonio, like this much north, like basically we're, we're downtown. Anyhow, today we're gonna be talking about the Almost Park neighborhood. Before I get started, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification button and make sure to like my video. I do videos like this all the time where we talk about neighborhoods in Central Texas. We talk about what's going on with the housing market and then I show you cool houses and cool neighborhoods that I like. Ready? Let's do it. Let's go, let's go see what Almost Park is all about. So let me just start by telling you the location of Almost Park. So if you're looking on the map and you see East Hildebrand and 281, literally Almost Park is just north of East Hildebrand. One of the reasons I really like the neighborhood, of course, is just because of the location. Of course, it's right off of 281. It sits on Almost Basin, which has tons of walking trails, and there's actually a walking trail that will take you to the quarry, which is a shopping center where you can find literally everything you need there. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Whole Foods. Whole Foods is based out of Austin, and the Whole Foods in Central Texas tend to be some of the nicer ones in the country, is what I've seen. You can go in, you can get some lunch, of course you can get your groceries, you can get some wine, you can get some snacks. It's really convenient and overall really, really nice. That's my last plug for Whole Foods. We just left Almost Park. And now we are at the Quarry Shopping Center. It's called the Quarry Market. It's basically a massive shopping center where there's literally like every kind of store you could possibly think of. There is a Nike right there. There's a Sephora behind me, or there's, there's an Ulta Beauty. There's a bunch of restaurants and it does, I will say it does kind of have more of a big box feel. Once, once we leave the neighborhood, um, it just feels a little bit more commercial, but it's really convenient overall. And there's just a ton of stuff to do here and a ton of places to go shopping. It's just a very convenient thing to have less than two miles away. I actually think it's, if, if you walk, it's a mile and a half away from the neighborhood. One of the other really wonderful things about Almost Park is that when you drive through the neighborhood, there is so much history. That one's adorable. That one's, a, that one not so much. That one's adorable. The neighborhood started development in the early 1900s and there is so much variety in the style of homes. Even if they're older homes, like they could be like a kind of a Spanish mission style home or more of a traditional brick home with like pillars. There's a lot of variety and a lot of history. And one of my friends was telling me that she, she thinks that like these historical type homes in Almost Park have stories to tell, which I thought was actually super cute and a really good way to describe it. Most of the homes sit on really big yards. Wow, what is happening? Where are we? When we were driving through, we saw this home that looked like it may have sat on probably three acres, and that was just the backyard. Also, it had a super long driveway. It was like this really beautiful, elegant brick home and had like a roundabout uh, like drive for guests or like to park your car very quickly. And then the driveway was on the side of the home and it was super long and it went way back to the property. And then the, the backyard, which was also a lot of side yard, was like I said, probably about three acres. Super, super, Huge. Because there is so much history and all of these homes are so beautifully maintained, it the neighborhood has a really warm, comfortable energy to it. So this cute little brick house was built in 1928. It's 1991 square feet, so almost 2,000 square feet. Most of the homes here started development in the 1920s from, from now. I mean, well, there's some homes that were torn down and then rebuilt completely. All the personal touches in this area, even though they can be kind of quirky, are very tastefully done. And I think just so adorable and so charming. There's this one little house in particular, which I super duper love. It's not for sale, unfortunately. Not yet anyway. But this adorable little mission style house with this massive window in the front. It's like rounded and so cute. There's so much character to it. I'm really tempted to go up, knock on the door and see if they want to move. Because I want it. 
I also think what's kind of interesting is like th these two homes over here have this more historical looking Texas limestone exterior finish, while the home next door over here is more of like a colonial brick. It's been painted, so it looks a little bit more like concrete-y than, than brick, but it's just, there's just a lot of different styles and I love it. It's so cute. The variety's adorable. Walking through the neighborhood, I just felt very welcome. The neighbors were really nice. People waved. And it was just a very calm place to be. Something that's kind of common in San Antonio is that you have these communities or neighborhoods that are sort of their own little cities within San Antonio. And Olmos Park is one of those communities. Olmos Park has their own fire department and their own police station. I've heard that the city services are excellent. They're super responsive and they do a really great job. The people that live there feel really well or, or really taken care of. As I mentioned earlier, Olmos Park basically just sits right next to the Olmos Basin, which let me tell you is absolutely beautiful. There are tons, tons of trees. Texas has these, I don't know what kind of trees they are because I'm not, I'm not an arborist, but in, in central Texas, we have these really awesome kind of gnarly trees that have so much character to them and almost basin is covered in them. There's also lots of trailheads. There's miles of biking and hiking and, and walking trails. We saw a lot of soccer fields. It's a very welcoming place to go. If you like being outdoors, you can hike for hours and hours if you'd like, or you can go for walks. And it's, it's just a really beautiful thing to have right there next to the neighborhood. So we talked about the style of homes that you can find in Almost Park and kind of the age and the location. Let's talk a little bit about pricing. So I'm looking at our realtor database and right now there are homes listed from the high 500s, which granted is probably gonna be something that needs some updating, likely habitable, but it'll probably need some work. There's one home that's listed for 2.9 million. However, most of the homes will be anywhere from like that low 600 up until that 1.3 million range. Real cheap houses. So this new construction home looks like it's a historical home being completely redone. That's, that's intricate, complicated, and expensive, and very, very elegant. Oh, oh my God! That's scrumptious. Oh, wow. So I think it's pretty safe to say that most homes will fall within that 600 range up until about like the 1.2 million mark, more or less. So that's what I have got for you about Olmos Park in San Antonio, Texas. It really is such a magical little neighborhood and it's so welcoming and it's so clean and it's so beautifully taken care of. I could literally just spend all day hanging out there. Actually, I should probably just move there if I'm just gonna hang out there, right? Because it's less creepy to do and probably a better investment of my time and money. Anyway, I love doing videos like this. I think it's really fun to go to these cool neighborhoods and talk about them. If there's another neighborhood that you'd like to learn about, either in Austin or San Antonio or anything in between, leave a comment. If you have other questions about these neighborhoods, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. If you're thinking about making a move anywhere in Austin or San Antonio, feel free to reach out. You can call me, text me, email me, or send me an Instagram DM, whatever works for you. If you are looking to make a move, I got you. Again, I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor. Thanks for watching.